Recording in progress. of the President, Vice President, My name is Eric Teuri. I appear alongside my friends, Mr. Duncan Okach. Present, my lord. EAT in between. Uh, Mr. Oringe Waswa. Present, my lord. Lord, we appear for the petition. The third respondent is the Inspector General of Police, and the fifth respondent, Sarit Center Shopping Mall. Um, Lord, we did serve uh, the application and the orders on all the parties. We have filed our affidavit of service and it is on record. All the parties stamp received the application and the order that you had given on the 15th of November. Yes, they were served physically, and we have a stamped copy on our end as received. Some parties who actually did receive under protest, but uh, especially the the DPP and Taifoa, uh, but they are here. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, my lord. And uh, yes, we, we we have filed it. It was filed yesterday on the fifth. My Lord, the court was gracious enough on the application which we had filed to issue a writ of habeas corpus for the production of the second petitioner, Osman Khalif Abdi. My Lord, the second petitioner was kidnapped on the 10th of November 2023 and a lot seven days thereafter. Or at the rivers or in the forest. as has previously happened to those who have been abducted or as the term is enforced disappearance. Um, 
My Lord, the most disturbing thing about this abduction is the fact that though the National Police Service have the apparatus to conduct investigations, and they have an infrastructure to conduct investigations, they have been lax in their investigations. They have not given the family or us as their advocates any progress report in terms of investigations. They have not been keen to obtain the CCTV footage of the abduction from Sarit Center, the fifth respondent hearing. And they have even refused to cooperate with the family to write a letter just a simple letter to Sarit Center authorizing them to release the CC, CCTV footage to the family. Sorry, my lord. To write a letter to Sarit Center, the fifth respondent, Also, my Lord, I also an annexed the OB that was also issued to the first petitioner when second, sorry, the first petitioner when she also. It is uh, OB number 58. So for the abduction is OB number 58, reported on the 10th of November 2023. It should be 58 less than 30 seconds. I think it's important than not repeating it. Yes, just for the record, I believe it is important for the court just to take note of this. My colleague may have left it out. Yes, my lord, one of the reasons why we are begging this court to issue an order for the third respondent the first respondent to come to court, my Lord, is that it has come to our knowledge that this subject motor vehicle is actually currently at Parkland's police station as we speak. How that vehicle ended up there, we do not know. And, and my Lord, uh, it is important that uh, being the investigators of this particular matter, the third respondent, my Lord, because this is where this matter was reported, they have answers to this particular matter. And if they don't have, that is the reason IPOA is also part of this matter. that they can also help uh, unravel this uh, particular mystery. Hello. You are covered, my lord, but uh, yeah. the orders were issued on 15th day of November, 2023. 16th November, my lord. Sorry, my lord. 
turn into the thing that you don't get in my lot or anything. Yeah. All right, the, 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 the hours on the thumb is uh, 15 for five hours, my lord. at which we, we were happy we were not in a position to do so, although I have done the skeleton part of my ground floor partition. And my lord, the second... But just to confirm that you were also served with the petition and the order yesterday. We have filed our notice of appointment. We'll therefore be requesting for more time to file a substantive response on behalf of the fourth opponent. My Lord, my senior has made an application for an order that the fourth respondent provides before this court. The car Passing record, my lord. It is in public knowledge, my lord, that our client is in the business of telecommunication. It does not deal with car tracking records. And my lord, what senior had submitted, this is under the mandate of the Directorate of Command, Control, and Communication Center of the National Police Service. And therefore, my lord, we are opposed to the grant of the Hague order and we pay for time to substantively respond to both the application and the petition of us. My Lord, on behalf of the interested party, to confirm that you were served yesterday Without an objection, my lord. We do confirm that you were served yesterday in the afternoon of this evening before this court. And we'll be seeking more time to put in an appropriate response. Okay. In addition, my lord, we wish to indicate before this court that we have received a formal complaint touching on this matter and the action taken by the third respondent and the same is currently under investigation in respect to the action or inaction OB number 39 and OB number 58. And we will be we await a report an investigation report on the same. And we'll be seeking more time to put in an appropriate response, my lord. Of 10th November 39 of 11 of November 2022. Mr. Chairman, we the petitioner. And we believe it will shed more light on the steps that have been taken in investigating the abduction of a certain petitioner. Because of the nature of this matter, my lord, we, 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 yeah. 
I'm begging the court at this juncture, my lord, because of the history of such matters. My lord, when the court issues the orders that we are begging it issue, that is when a person can either appear dead or alive. And my lord, the position of the court have been that habeas corpus ends at that point. My lord, based on this particular matter, there is already disobedience of your orders, and not only disobedience, they've not even cared to come and explain. I'm begging the court, and I know we'll reach that juncture, to treat this going forward as outright contempt. Secondly, my lord, as I finish, there's the aspect raised by the uh, DPP. My lord, they've told you they have no role whatsoever, and we do appreciate they have not issued any instructions to investigate. But my lord, that is exactly what I would want to draw the court's attention to. My lord, Article 157, sub Article 4, is very clear that they have a clear mandate, my lord, to direct the persons who have refused to even come before you, over and above your orders, to investigate any issue, any matter. The moment they receive this particular petition, my lord, they should be telling us, we have also, over and above the court's orders, we have also written, we also want these answers. So that all of us are looking for these answers. And it will only aid such causes. That's all I needed to bring. Yes. Yes. Very, very true. Yeah. Lord, I'm just saying uh, before we come back, I am hoping this afternoon. Yeah. Because the court appreciated the seriousness of it, my Lord. Our eyes are on all courts. Yeah. 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 Is all my lord, I'm happy the court has taken our hand. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. My lord, uh, yes, my lord. Whatever orders you make, those things must be obeyed. That is that is true, my lord, my lord. Ask us to come back and treat this issue, which is almost already one. You asked us to come back at four. We would have extracted the order and we would put. We don't really have to come. We don't really have to come. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Uh, my lord, uh, in the circumstances, and, and, I, and I, agree, I agree with you, uh, I think we have 
uh, even though we have uh, a certain urgency to it, we also have to be reasonable. In yes, in the circumstances. I, I agree, my lord. So we could still. According to the law, yes, my lord. So the law was So we need to now see the kind of thinking has changed where we were not looking at this kind of My lord, I, I, that's exactly what I wanted to say, that I, I agree with you in the circumstances and where we find ourselves, uh, we should come back on Monday. It's just uh, the uh, first petition, of course, for obvious uh, uh, reasons uh, uh, could not appear because, uh, again, uh, yes, my lord. Yes, yes, my lord. Yes, my lord, we can... Uh my lord, number, number C... Not because C is, is uh, in the interim and uh, 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 B because the petition will take quite a bit of time uh, for hearing. So we could do uh, pet, uh, order number C. Um, a lot because the order D is pending the hearing and determination. Yeah. Yes, so my lord, what we could do, we could go with D. And if the respondent has not shown up, the, the orders were directed to the third, first and third respondent, as well as the second respondent. Third respondent has not in any way attempted to comply with those directions. They are not in court. I have not explained to the court where the subject is. Having had the counsel, the respective parties, and satisfied that these court orders are not in vain and they should not in any way be in vain, I direct as follows. Number one, the Inspector General of Police or his most senior representative and the director of criminal investigations or his most senior representative do appear before this court on 20th of November 2023 at 10 a.m. and the show cause why Osman Malik Abdi is subject and the second petitioner should not be released from captivity in compliance with the court's directions issued earlier. Number two, Safaricom and PLC, which they are directed to supply to the pet first petitioner and all of her legal team and to this court car tracking records for motor vehicle KCT 163H from 10th November 2023 to date within 24 hours from the date of the order. Number three, Sarit Center Shopping Mall, all the owners of the mall are hereby directed to supply to the first petitioner or her legal team and to the court CCTV footage for November 10th covering the events surrounding the abduction and the movement of the vehicle of the petitioner as well as the motor vehicle KBH 543A. 
and that to be done within 24 hours from the date of its order. Further orders and directions will be issued on 20th November this year at 10 a.m. as earlier directed. Those are the orders of the court. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, members of uh, the press. We uh, are the legal team that uh, is representing uh, Osman Halif. Osman Halif was abducted by persons who we believe to be police officers on uh, Friday last week on the 10th of November, while coming out of uh, the Sarit Center shopping mall together with his wife. We did file a case for habeas corpus, and uh, the court on the 15th granted our application in terms of the writ of habeas corpus, which, is to, which directed uh, the Inspector General of the Police to produce the said uh, Osman Halif before this court or any other court on this day. Today we have been in court and Mr. Halif has not been produced and so therefore the court has found that uh, the orders that it has given have not been complied with. It has ordered and summoned the Inspector General of Police and the Director of uh, Criminal Investigations to appear in court, in open court, on Monday the 20th of November at 10 a.m. to explain their whereabouts of uh, Mr. Osman Halif, who was abducted on 10th of uh, November. We deem this a very significant uh, a decision and action by the court because we have seen a sudden increase in abduction of persons and uh, we believe that the court has done the right thing by speaking very rightly and loudly and saying that if any person is to be denied their liberty, they must be denied their liberty as by law provided. So the case is still ongoing. As of now, the information we have is that uh, they say our client, Mr. Osman Halif, is still missing. We hope that he is alive. And uh, we urge the uh, Inspector General of Police and also all right-thinking Kenyans to condemn First, the Inspector General of Police to comply with the orders and ensure uh, that Mr. Osman Khalif is produced in court as ordered, by the, uh, as, as ordered by the court. And also we call on all Kenyans to condemn this culture of enforced disappearance. You will remember that the Law Society has been at the forefront of uh, uh, calling for action and an end to enforce the disappearance because it makes all of us unsafe. And uh, we are seeing that the government, again, despite disbanding the squad at DCI that was said to have been responsible for extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearance, we have seen the return of the said squads that have perpetrated not just the disappearance of Osman, but also the disappearance of other people whose reports are in the public domain. But for purposes of this case, uh, we, I represent uh, Mr. Osman together with my colleagues, Mr. Duncan Okach and Mr. Ringe Waswa, and we hope that uh, one, he will be produced alive, and two, that the Inspector General of Police and the Director of Criminal Investigation 
will comply with the summons that the court has given and appear in court on the uh, 20th of November to explain what or the whereabouts or the reason why Mr. Osman Halif had been detained. So we thank you and that is, uh, unless you have any question, that is the end of our statement. Those who arrested Mr. Osman, does the family law have any clue as to why he was being arrested? Was he being investigated for any criminal culpability? Was he involved in any form of corruption? Why, what was the motive of his arrest or abduction for that matter? Maybe if I may answer that question with the permission of the president. Uh, the director of public prosecutions was represented in court today. And he has said in no uncertain terms that they have no file on our client. They have not instructed any investigations whatsoever on our client. And so the question that begs, even if there is something being investigated, which we do not know, the court is saying there is due process. Arrest someone, not kidnap. The police uh, know very well that they have the power to arrest or to summon, but not to kidnap. Kidnapping is a thing of the past. So at this particular point, the question that we are asking is where is our client? In fact, the rest we can deal with. But the only tools that us as advocates we are availed with is to represent our clients in court. But you cannot represent a client who has not even been presented in court. The police cannot be the investigators. They are seemingly the complainants, and they are seemingly already meting out a punishment on our client without due process. So at this point, the thing that you should take home is one thing. The court has summoned the IG himself in person, and the director of criminal prosecutions in person to appear physically on that 20th day of November 2023. And we are happy that the court, through these orders, show them the seriousness of these particular actions. And we are saying, and that's why the president of the Law Society is very keen on this case. It is something that can happen to any other person. And the government has been at the forefront of complaining about such rogue officers that give the government a bad name. So even if, and we hope that they will abide by those orders, if they do not, there are many other ways, us as advocates, we can take up, and Kenyans in general, to ensure that they, they, these particular actions, which are contrary to the Constitution, people, take, uh, people actually become answerable to them. I think that answers your question.